Okay, please continue enjoying your lunch. And Dan and I will get started. I'll get seated. Anyway, hello, welcome. Thank you. Uh, yes, yes, you, are you, <laughs> you will need Thank it. You. Or they'll right. start throwing things at you. They get, they're, they're a very committed audience. Uh, or they will be committed, we're not sure yet. Oh, I didn't mean that, it's Valentine's Day. Um, I thought that a good starting point would be to go back to when Jack Valenti was here about uh, three, three or four years ago. Uh, it was just before he retired. And the number one issue that he was battling with then was piracy. And I was curious if it's as much of an issue to you now, if not greater than it was to him then, if it's, if it's under control or if it's compounded. <clears throat> All of the above. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, it is so easy to copy music and movies and video and the profit margins are so great in this, it, much greater than almost any other form of organized crime you can imagine, that the... Organized uh, crime, that's tough words. Uh, that, that the, uh, that the uh, product is ubiquitous and it's out there. It's out there in physical goods. It's out there on the Internet. It's out there in the new media, the, whether it's uh, in whatever form a person's going to get it. So it is, uh, it's a constant battle to try to to make it more and more difficult for, for people to want to pick up this product illegally and at the same time provide them alternatives so they can get the product yeah, the legally in a hassle-free, reasonably priced way. Um, do you think there are people in this audience who have handled uh, pirated or illegal merchandise and don't know it? Uh, well, uh, let me see. Just yeah. a, I know this man hasn't back here. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> Uh, but, I mean, is it so pervasive in the market that people don't even know when well, they're... Well, in many cases, if you buy stuff on the street, you have to presume if you're buying a copy of Pirates of the Caribbean on the street and it costs right. you 3 to $5. But that's the obvious. You know, that's pretty right. obvious. Uh, and uh, if you go on the Internet and you download from a site and you don't have okay, to pay but, for it, but then that's a, the obvious. But, yes. but this is a good point, Dan. Yeah. There are an awful lot of sites you can go to now where the line's not too clear. You can down, you know, if you're not versed in what you're talking about, how do people really know? Because there's so much out there that you can it, download it is, now. It is true. First of all, I, I doubt many people here have uh, picked up product uh, illegally on the streets unless uh, they just haven't used very good judgment. It's interesting, however, that a lot of folks will tell me, well, I went to China and I bought this stuff on the streets like they, they it, it was like a great tourist desire on their part and mm -hmm. and I, I just thought it cost to myself, me five cents so I figured well it, yeah it was probably more like a dollar or something dollar, like right. that uh, I'll tell you an interesting story is is that I was in China a few years back my son is a film producer I'll do a quick commercial he is one of the producers of a movie called 27 dresses which is out right oh. now so any of you see that it'd be very kind is that of a conflict that. of interest no. from the head of the okay no, no, just checking. Not at all. But anyway so <laughs> I'm in uh, China and and uh, there's a lot of pirated stuff on the streets, and we go into a store, and I see my son. It was one of the producers of a movie called uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and okay. it was two not plugs. a pardon. No, two plugs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it did not <laughs> do exceptionally father. well in the in the, uh, uh, the box office, but but anyway, so they had a copy of it the same day that it was uh, distributed mm -hmm. in, in theaters. And um, it was just you know it was clearly it was a pirated yeah. copy. And you went in there with all sorts of pirated stuff, and so. Uh, that day I met with the chief copyright officer of China who is, had heard the complaints from me and Jack Valenti and thousands of people, you shouldn't let this happen, you shouldn't let this happen, this and that. And I said to him, I said, I want you to know that I, I, you shouldn't let this happen. They nodded like it was crazy. But I said, this really makes me mad because I said, I want you to know that my son was the producer of this movie and I take this personally. So that night they shut down the store. The Chinese authorities shut down the store. That didn't last very long. It yeah. was reopened three days later. But uh, and so they now refer to that store in China as Glickman's, Glickman's uh, store. Sure, you know, yeah, Glickman's uh, store. But but the the, the but can uh, you the, use that same angle for every one of your member? Uh, well, companies? they've asked me to travel the world and do <laughs> and nothing do but that. And have your but, son work for all uh, of them. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, I would say that it is. Um, if you use the internet, there are lots of legal sites that you can yeah. download from, and, uh, and more and more there publicly available and the information is out there yeah. so it's becoming less and less difficult to find them right well now like you go to imdb and often within the threads on imdb there are links to clips from films that are not necessarily the trailers 
Now, is that illegal? It may or may not or it be. Can, it, it, it may, but it's so easy to do. That's right. But in, in more and more of those cases, they mash up stuff and they mm -hmm. put it together. Or they may put different pieces together. But more and more, you're finding those available on legal sites. Uh, but, of course, they're not for free. And one of the ways you can determine it is if something looks like it's too good to be true, it usually is. Mm -hmm. So we, at, if you look on the MPA website, the Recording Industry website, and some of these other websites, mm -hmm. they will outline a whole litany of legal services that you can use yeah. and you know that you're not ripping anybody off. I, I, I don't know the age of your son, but I imagine he's the generation past the generation that lived off Napster and LimeWire and every other kind of site that these kids can get things off. And we know that it's young people who are largely the, the greater consumers of the illegal downloads. And what, what, do you mind going after these young people? I mean, isn't, they're your main target. Doesn't that bother you to some extent? Generally speaking, the recording industry has been much more aggressive in suing students. Right. And, and we have done a little bit of that, but we have more than that tried to go after, let's say, uh, the Internet service providers right. or the uh, universities, and not just on an enforcement basis, but one of our, our big themes now is to work with the universities around the country to try to educate them. After all, they are uh, places where uh, intellectual property is created. Right. So trying to get them to join us on efforts to block or filter uh, uh, infringed material mm -hmm. on site, educate students about the, the right. value of property. What you find is as, as you go into the elementary and secondary years, you find more of this happening there even than you find it at the college years. But the trick here is is that we know that a physical piece of property is not to be to stolen or taken. Right. I mean, it's, it's clear. So if somebody goes into a blockbuster and they steal a, uh, a DVD. The, the last blockbuster the, yeah, there still is. That's right. Or they, uh, uh, Walmart. Walmart, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, taking it off the Internet, for whatever reason, there's a, a, a divide there. There's a bridge there. People don't see that that's exactly. property. Right. Whereas they would see it if it's physical property. And one of our jobs is to continue working with the publishing industry, the uh, business software mm -hmm. industry, not just mo movies and music, that in fact this is real property. It affects people's lives. You have if a provision in the education bill that what was coming up today or tomorrow? We, it was last week. Last we have a provision week. that requires the universities to basically Did set that? up systems to, 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 uh, to offer legal services right. online to, to, to provide educational material to students about uh, what they can and can't do online. Isn't the um, isn't the future of movies though going to be that um, basically we'll be at home and we'll just download to our screen the movie we won't go to theaters? Uh, well, I don't know. If, I don't here, for example, in this audience, how many of you have gone to a movie theater to watch a movie in the last month? Okay, so this is a pretty big movie audience. How many of you have watched a movie uh, either video on demand or you've you've watched a movie at home? Uh, now I'm not talking about DVD now. I'm just talking about watch a movie on cable by buying the movie on demand. How many of you have done that in the last month? So, you know. Um, and how many of you bought a movie from a street vendor? <laughs> ah, you yeah, don't have to answer right, that right. question. Um, I, I think that technology is going to make it more and more that people will find alternative ways to buy video product, television yeah. and movies. I still come from the school that the the, the intellectual and emotional heart of this business is the collective viewing a of a product room, and a, and a, a place screen. where a bunch of strangers that don't know each other yeah. get together. On the other and hand, and ideally with some freshly popped popcorn. Yeah, not uh, big plastic bags that they haul from the back room. Uh, <laughs> the, the the truth is is that uh, movie attendance has, has been going down for a long time, partly because. Uh, there are other things to do. Television had as much to do with this as anything else. Yeah. This last year, actually, attendance and box office ticked up a bit, Your which is good. Your title is Motion Picture Association, but do you represent television, too? Well, I represent the six major motion picture companies, and, and they all own the major okay, television so, uh, so you care about as well. TV. That's right. 